What's up, people? Welcome to Trinity Plus One. I am one of your hosts, Ryan Kirby. That's right. My last name's Kirby. Because this is my first video here, I wanted to make it a bit interesting and show you guys what kind of games that I find really enjoyable and have played, you know, in the past. Games like this one. Or this one. Yeah, uh, uh, not, not so much that one. So to start it off, we're going to be beginning with a list of the top 10 co-op games of all times. Or at least the ones that I've played anyway. So let's jump right in and get started. Guild Wars 2, a free-to-play MMO that was released back in 2012 for the PC. While I feel that you could consider all MMOs cooperative games, I specifically wanted to mention Guild Wars for a variety of reasons. One of these reasons is due to its scaling system, which levels down higher level players to the environments in which they travel to. While this may seem problematic for some, it's perfect for cooperative gaming as it allows friends of the player to join them in their efforts to fight enemies without being too overpowered while still gaining a reasonable amount of XP, so they don't feel like a lack of reward for fighting lower level enemies. It also featured multiplayer cooperative puzzles which would require a certain amount of people to solve. It, it, also, it also had this thing. Oh my god. This is the most terrible thing I've ever seen. The only thing that would make this better is if it was a backpack. My life is complete. Coming in at number 9 is Portal 2, a puzzle platform game released in 2011 on a variety of platforms. If you've never played this game, or at least the prequel to this game, then pause this video, go play it, and come back and tell me how grateful you are that I told you to do that. Portal has a simplistic design. Go through one portal, and come out the other. And there's rooms and lava and traps and shit you gotta use your portal to get past. Once you get the hang of it though, it becomes really simple. And the only reason you had for not completing a level was your own inability to see how to escape it. The creators of Portal took this and threw in a cooperative element into Portal 2. Each player has a portal gun and must use their own portals to assist the other player. This became really fun if you were new to the game because both players would be in the same boat and confused about the same problems. However, it would eventually become infuriating when one player figures out a puzzle and tries to explain it to the other player who still hasn't figured it out. Dude, what the f Oh my god, just fucking put it there! <sighs> this is hopeless. The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure for the Nintendo GameCube, one of the few co-op games from the Legend of Zelda series. Released back in 2005, this game is iconic for multiplayer puzzles, interesting graphics, memorable audio, and it's even more memorable hardware. I mean seriously, what the fuck is all this shit? Why do I need it? What is it here for? Four Swords Adventure required a Nintendo GameCube, a Game Boy Advance, and a Game Boy Advance to GameCube adapter cable. Back in those days, majority of people at least had a Game Boy Advance, but not many people carried around a spare Game Boy Advance GameCube adapter. Granted, you could always play the game on your own with a GameCube controller, but if you had an extra three people with you, then you're going to need four Game Boys, four cables, and four capable players. Because let's face it, not everyone's that good at this game. Oh no, this is a fantastic multiplayer game. It really takes cooperative gaming to the next level when it requires each player to play a certain role in the completion of the level, but it falls back on the list due to its complicated setup. I hate you so much, you stupid cable! Castle Crashers, a 4-player 2D side-scrolling hacky slashy game that was released back in 2008 for the Xbox 360 and then in 2010 for the PlayStation. And then in 2012 for the PC, cause you know, fuck PC users. Castle Crashers was one of the funner co-op games around. You're a knight, your friends are knight, and you have to kill things to kiss pretty girls. It's all my fantasies come true. Basically a bunch of princesses get kidnapped by Ganondorf in Hobbit form, and you and your buddies have gotta rescue them and slay the evil Ganon. This game was more than just fun, it was hilarious. It had everything, action, drama, pooping deers, pooping bears, more pooping deers, and a plot, I think. And the best part was you got to experience it all with your best mates. So I'm 
just gonna include all the new Super Mario Brothers in this one because they're basically all the same game, but I'll mainly focus on the Wii version. The new Super Mario Bros. for the Wii was a revamped and redone take on the original Super Mario Bros. game for the old Nintendo Entertainment System. The game featured a new 2.5D look rather than a 2D look and added new graphics, power-ups and some levels. But what was most important about these was that it allowed for up to 4 players to play at the same time. You could play as Mario, Blue Toad, Yellow Toad and the always important Luigi, savior of the Mushroom Mansion. What made this game fun was how you approached each level with the player you played with. You can help them get to higher places, show them hidden paths, help them cross a level, or even jump on their head when they try to make a jump, you stupid f <laughs> Left for Dead, a first-person zombie survival shooter that was released in 2008. The game focuses around the main characters Bill, Zoe, Francis, and Black Guy, and how they are immune to a viral infection that has infected the majority of the population. Each player gets to choose who they wish to play as, with at least one of your male friends getting stuck as Zoe, and are thrown into a level to shoot it out with mass zombie hordes. Certain zombies known as Special Infected do appear and will literally screw you and stop your progress to the exit. So it's up to your trusty friends to come to your rescue and help you out. Because only with true partnership can one hope to overcome obstacles that will be faced within this game. Minecraft was a sandbox survival game developed by Mojang and released for the PC in 2011, and then on a variety of different platforms sometimes later. I always found myself questioning how it drew in so many people despite its pixelated and blocky design. Why would people want to play a game made in 2011 that looked like it was made in 2001? And the answer was simple. People cared more about the gameplay rather than the look. A game where you could adventure a seemingly never-ending world, crafting weapons to battle monsters and building houses to shield yourself from the night. Unlike games like Crisis or Final Fantasy or The Last of Us, which rely heavily upon its visual appeal, Minecraft makes the user feel completely in control of their surroundings and their actions. This was only enhanced upon when they added in a multiplayer option to the game which allowed you and up to... Wait, how many people can play this game? You and all your friends could explore a randomly generated world together in any way you wanted, working to construct a building or survive hordes of enemies. It made the whole experience a lot better, especially when you randomly drown or get hit by one too many arrows, it's always good to have a partner there to steal all your stuff. Secret of Mana, a JRPG that was released for the Super Nintendo back in 1993. The story is based around our red-haired friend Tapion from Dragon Ball Z, and after getting some horrible encouragement from his friends, he falls down a waterfall, finds a magic sword, and gets banished from his village. Eventually he meets up with some blonde-haired girl, and they go on an epic quest to rescue her boyfriend? And save the world from evil or something, I honestly didn't make it that far. This game is like no other game I've ever played. It offered the ability to play through a proper story-driven JRPG with up to three people. And to top it off, it was on an old console like the Super Nintendo. I love the cooperative elements of this game and how they make each person playing feel like a necessary part of the story. You're not just some random NPC who appeared suddenly to help out, you're actually required for the story's progression. It falls shorter on my list due to a lot of design flaws, like its difficult enemies and confusing directions. <laughs> what can you say, it's a SNES game. I mean, as long as it isn't as hard as Battletoads, and I remember none of you people remember that game. Please don't pimple Linda. You got a guy? No. You can't lie to me and say you've never played or at least heard of Halo. Specifically, I'm talking about Halo 3, the very first Halo. For the Xbox 360 anyway. People went nuts over this game, and they had every right to. The story was magnificent, the levels were well laid out, and the controls handled amazingly. Everything about this game just felt natural. Starting off on another adventure as Master Chief has never felt better. Now mind you, this was way back in the day when Microsoft was all for the online play. Halo 3 had a brand new 4 player cooperative campaign mode for you and all your buddies. Specifically 3 of your buddies. Your one buddy who is better than you, your other buddy who is worse than you, and your last buddy who has the bad internet connection and lags the game every f 10 seconds. Why co-op works so well with this game was because it integrated the players evenly and made it fair across the board. When you couldn't complete a mission on your own, there was always the option of a helping hand. 
and it was always fun to approach each mission with a different strategy. And another really good thing about this game too was its replayability. I think I've replayed the entire campaign to Halo 3 with multiple friends over 20 times. Because when you play with other people, it's not about finishing the story or quitting because of intense lag. It's about spending time with your friends. And then killing them with grenades when they accidentally shoot you. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate for the Wii U and 3DS Originally for the Nintendo Wii, it was later fixed up and re-released with new updates and controls for the Wii U and 3DS. While it didn't do quite as well on the Wii due to its difficult controls and laggy online play, it did fantastically on the new gen console. With updated graphics and new enemies, this is one unique game. One of the main elements of this game is its specific focus on cooperative gameplay. This game was designed to be played with other people, and I frankly feel you shouldn't even bother purchasing it unless you're buying it with somebody else. The aim of this game is to take on large monsters using different sorts of weapons and skills that you pick up throughout the game. The game doesn't focus on the power of the weapon so much, but more the skill in which you have to wield that weapon and use it efficiently. Eventually you reach a point where you can't physically kill any more enemies before your time runs out, and so you need a friend for that additional damage to help you get through it. What makes this game fun, and my number one of the best co-op games of all time, is that it's all based around helping each other. You go into the wild with your best friend and use your skills to take down the biggest monster you can find to get better equipment. Sometimes you're gonna need your friend to draw the monsters away from you, sometimes you're gonna need your friend to heal you, sometimes you might need your friend to block and attack you, and other times you might just need your friend to smash you skyward as you search for that last viable resource you so desperately need. Oh, and there's some dancing in there as well. <laughs> 